So as has already been uh, introduced by Dr. Dipendra, I had promised in the in my last session, which was a couple of a weeks ago, that I would come back to you with the investigations of this short case of swelling buttock and abdomen uh, in a future session. So today I am ready with the investigations. The invest this patient has been put through some imaging investigations, and I am here to present those before you. So before we go on to the investigations, we will have a brief recap of the case for the benefit of those students who were not present last time and for the revision of those who were present. So this patient was a 12-year-old boy who presented to us with pain in the left hip for one year duration. Well, it all started with a swelling in the left buttock uh, which he noticed eight months ago. So the pain essentially preceded the onset of the swelling, or at least he noticed the swelling four months later. And now, over the last two months, the parents and the child have noticed that there is a swelling in the left side of the abdomen also. On further questioning, it was brought out that the swelling has been increasing in size. It was lemon-sized to start with eight months ago in the buttock. But over the last two months, it has progressed rapidly to its present size. Along with this, this patient was also having some constitutional symptoms like fever for the last five days. He was also complaining of loss of weight, which was noticed due to loosening of the clothes that he was wearing. And the parents told me that this patient was, um, was not eating well. There was a loss of appetite. This was the brief history which this child gave us. And uh, to show you the clinical picture, this was the clinical picture. There is a swelling in the abdominal region. It's quite obvious. And there is a swelling in the gluteal region. Interestingly, this patient was keeping the left hip inflection the knee was fully flexed and he was constantly with the left hand holding on to the left ankle. So to take this picture, I had to request him to take his hand away. But with the hand, he was trying to minimize the movement at the hip joint, which was excruciatingly painful. This was the picture from the front. You can again see the gluteal swelling and the abdomen, the en entire left lower quadrant of the abdomen is going on to the umbilical region, was swollen. And to show you from behind, this is the amount of gluteal swelling which was there. There is some fullness in this area, the paraspinal area also. And we had sort of chalked out the summary of this patient in the last presentation as a spontaneous, rapidly growing, normothermic, well-demarcated, firm to soft swelling in the left gluteal and abdomen region. This swelling was found to be fixed to the underlying iliac bone. We did perform the various tests and all of you are advised to visit, revisit my previous session, for, which was devoted to the clinical presentation and the way the clinical examination is to be conducted in such cases. So please do 
revisit that talk to have some sort of a continuity of understanding in today's talk interestingly we have discussed that this patient had neurological deficit in the form of sensory diminution it was not a complete loss but there was a significant diminution of sensation in the anterior part of the thigh confined to the l2 to l4 dermatomes that means that the anterior part of the thigh proximally middle and overlying the the the, the knee as well as the medial malleolus there was a diminish in diminution in sensation we could not do a motor examination for the simple reason that there was exquisite pain in the hip joint and the patient was not cooperative to extend the knee joint so we could not ideal would have been to test for the power in the quadriceps muscle and to also look at the knee reflex but all this was not possible and i did not want to inflict too much pain on the on to the patient so we did not insist in the examination because we already had a clue that the l2 to l4 nerve roots are affected as far as the sensory examination is concerned the distal pulses both dorsal spedis and posterior tibial were present so there was no distal vascular deficit we also had with us a plain x ray uh, which we will come to but before that we had discussed the clinical possible clinical diagnosis and we felt that we are dealing with a malignant tumor of the iliac bone most probably an osteosarcoma or an ewing sarcoma and as i said we had an x ray with us uh and we discussed what would be the plausible investigations to be performed in this particular case and during the interactive session we did zero down on the first investigation as an x ray of the pelvis ap and a chest pa view the chest pa view to pick up any obvious secondaries in the chest since we are we were thinking that we are dealing with a malignant tumor of the iliac bone along with this we did consider the possibility of a ct scan for better delineation of the bony involvement an mri scan to delineate the soft tissue extent of the tumor and lastly to clinch the diagnosis once and for all a biopsy of some sort would be required all this was discussed last time in the interactive session and this was the x ray which was also available to us last time and we found that there was an extensive destruction an extensive destruction of the iliac wing predominantly with a pathological fracture of the iliac wing and the most interesting part was an extensive soft tissue swelling with new bone formation these flakes of bone a new bone formation and if you look at it carefully there are some streaks of new bone formation at right angles at right angles to the parent bone okay so this is uh, suggestive of the capacity of the tumor to create new bone in the soft tissue and thereafter we subjected this child to a ct scan and this is the coronal plane view of the ct scan again 
underscoring that there was an extensive destruction of the sacro of the iliac bone of the iliac bone the sacro iliac joint seemed to be intact sacro iliac joint essentially seems to be intact not violated at least in se- this section and along with this you can see an extensive soft tissue swelling extensive soft tissue swelling and this is the new bone formation the new bone formation very evident on ct scan again these are the axial ct scan pictures done for in the soft tissue window and what you can see is look at this beautifully visualized dumbbell shaped soft tissue tumor this is the soft tissue tumor which has uh, uh, which is in the shape of a dumbbell which is transgressing the iliac bone going both medial to the iliac bone as well as to the lateral side of the so on the both sides of the iliac wing as we found clinically that this tumor is spreading both medially and laterally uh transgressing the boundaries of the iliac wing so this is seen in these sections and you can see extensive new bone formation again all this is new bone formation and look at the extent of the tumor at places the iliac wing is intact but there is quite an extensive damage you can see the erosion of the iliac wing in this particular window along with new bone formation and this is the these are the mri pictures again an axial scan or a transverse section taken through the abdomen pelvic le- abdominal pelvic lesion again a dumbbell shaped soft tissue swelling going across the iliac wing you can see that beautifully seen here in all these three pictures again we are just continuing with the different 